19 played, 19 to go. Welcome to my Game Week 19 Premier League predictions. Yes, guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. And today, this is my Game Week 19 Premier League predictions. And today, we are halfway through the 2022 to 2023 Premier League season. This So, we, we played 19 and we've got another 19 round of fixtures to go until the season ends in May. Make sure to smash like button, subscribe and let's get into my Game Week 19 predictions. Okay then, and the first game is happening tonight and it is Brentford versus Liverpool live on Sky Sports. Kick off at 5.30. Now, obviously, last time Liverpool and Brentford played each other at, in London, it was a 3-3 draw. And to be fair, Brentford, they can do quite decent against the big six. Um, So, Liverpool, they might find it a bit difficult tonight. But obviously, Brentford, they won 2-0 at West Ham. Brentford, arguably the better team. West Ham, very poor. Um, as Cody said, because he watched the game um, again when, when West Ham played Brentford. Liverpool, though, they started a bit slow against Leicester. I think Leicester were the better team. But when White Fast scored that first own goal, Liverpool got into rhythm. And, of course, I think they were they were getting better. Um, but, you know, uh, the question is, is Cody Gapko going to start? I don't know. I don't know if Gapko is going to be involved or not. I don't know. Um, but predict if I had to give a prediction, Brentford, you know, they, I think, you know, the app... The Brentford fans, you know, they're, they're quite decent. They can get behind their team at times if they're, like, getting back into the game. But prediction, I'm going to go Brentford 1, Liverpool 3, 3-1 three, to Liverpool. Okay, then, and the next game is a big game near the top of the Premier League. It is Arsenal versus Newcastle. It's first versus third in the Premier League. Um, this is going to be a brilliant game, to be honest. You know, Arsenal wrapping off 2022 with a 4-2 win at Brighton. Newcastle, I watched them and they drew 0-0 with Leeds. Now, in the first half, I think, in the first half for Newcastle against Leeds, I think I think the game was a bit 50-50. I think Newcastle and Leeds um, did quite well in the first half. But in the second half, it was all Newcastle. Leeds were very poor, but didn't, they didn't do well at all. And Newcastle, they had so many chances in that second half, but they just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Arsenal, though, people said, oh, it's just the, now the downfall of Arsenal. But at the moment, it looks like that's not going to happen. But this will be a tough game because Newcastle... When they do go behind, when 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 they know they're not, when Newcastle know they're not playing well, they will they will start playing well. They will get they will create chances, and that's what Arsenal are going to be careful of. But Newcastle, this is arguably going to be their toughest game of the season. Arsenal are on fire at the moment, um, but Arsenal, to be fair, Newcastle, like I said, they are a good team. Um, you know, you know, you know, and you know, I think one player. I've, but to be fair, I think you know. Um, I think Joe Willick did well against uh, Leeds. Joe Linton, some Maximan. Um, I, I think they all did well. So, I think Newcastle are gonna. I think Newcastle could get something, and I think they will get something. I don't think they'll get three points, but I think they'll get a draw. So I'm gonna go Arsenal one, Newcastle one. I'm gonna go one one. <clears throat> Okay, then, and the next game is Everton versus Brighton. Oh, my God, Roger just scored. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm watching the old fern derby. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, I'll try to speak. Try to see, see the goal. But, yeah, anyway, the next game is Everton uh, against Brighton. Now, Everton did get a 1-1 draw against Manchester City. Oh, good goal, to be fair. Um, but, yeah, anyway, Everton did get a 1-1 draw against Manchester City, and um, our, and to be fair, Damari Gray, what a goal that was. You know, he slipped, and then he absolutely pinged it into the top corner. It's a great goal. For Brighton, though, a 4-2 loss against Arsenal, but they did do well, Brighton, when when when, when it when it was when it was 4-2, um, four, four Brighton got motivated. They tried to score again. They did score again to make it 4-3, but, they, but the goal got ruled out for offside. Um, but Everton... You know, you know, drawing at Man City is a good result for them. They'll be feeling confident coming into this game, Everton, after the draw at the Etihad. But Brighton, they're very good. McAllister's back, which is a big boost for them too. So I think he should be available for this game tomorrow at Goodison Park. So my prediction is Everton 1, Brighton 3, 3-1 three, to Brighton. OK, then, and the next game is Leicester versus Fulham at the King Power Stadium. 
Now, Leicester with a 2-1 loss at Liverpool. And what an absolutely awful game. Won't fast hand. He scored two own goals. And he is the fourth player in Premier League history, I think, to score two own goals in a single game. So a very poor performance for him. But to be fair, Leicester, like I said, Leicester started really well against Liverpool. They, you know, they were putting balls over the top. They were just doing better than Liverpool's defence. But Fulham with a 2-1 win. Um, yes, no, not yesterday. Um, one more about Fulham um, with a 2-1 win against Southampton. Um, Fulham with a 2-1 win against Southampton. And, you know, I didn't watch the game. Um, but by the way, James Paul Prowse, what a free kick, by the way. Um, but Fulham, you know, they're doing really well at the moment. Obviously, with Brighton's loss, Fulham obviously are sat in that Europa Conference League spot uh, at the moment. Leicester are down in Leicester are down in thirteenth. But I don't know. Is the, are Leicester involved in that relegation battle? I'm not sure. But it it depends if Leeds and if Leeds start doing well, Bournemouth and Everton, Leicester could be involved in that. But for the time being, I think Leicester are just trying to catch up to Villa to Villa at the moment. So I think they are. Just in mid table at the moment, Leicester. But if Leicester do start, if Leicester do start um, dro going like dropping points, maybe they could be involved in that relegation battle. But Fulham, they are a good team, so I'm gonna back them with a two one away with Leicester one, Fulham two, two one to Fulham. Okay then, and the next game is Manchester United versus Bournemouth. Now Bournemouth did get a two 0 loss against Crystal Palace, so that's uh. Three losses on the trot for Bournemouth. A 1-0 loss at Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. A 2-0 loss at Chelsea. And a 2-0 loss at home to Crystal Palace. Now, obviously, Bournemouth, they are not doing well at all at the moment. Gary O'Neill, you know, he's now permanently Bournemouth's manager. And I have to be honest, I think Bournemouth are going down at the end of the season. United got a big win at Wolves. Marcus Rashford with the goal. To be fair, the game was alright. It wasn't the best, in my opinion. But United... This is going to be an easy win for them. I'm going to go with a big Manchester United 5, Bournemouth 0. 5 0 to Manchester United. And I'm telling you now, Marcus Rashford is going to get a hat trick. Okay, then, and the next game is a massive game. It's the first game on Wednesday. It's a massive game at St Mary's Stadium. It is 20th versus 18th. It's Southampton versus Nottingham Forest. Now, this game is absolutely huge. But Forest, what a game they. What a performance from them yesterday against Chelsea. Even though they drew, um, Forest were absolutely outstanding. You know, Forest were absolutely outstanding. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. Rangers have got a pen. Uh, but yeah, anyway, Forest, they were absolutely outstanding, um, to be honest, against Chelsea. The fans were loving it, and it was a really good performance by Forrest. For Southampton, though, again, another loss under Nathan Jones. Nathan Jones obviously would have experience managing against Forrest with his days at Luton. Um, but, yeah, I think this game, you know, Southampton, to be honest, they need to start picking up points. And I think this is a big opportunity for Southampton to pick up some points. I think it really is an opportunity for Southampton to pick up some points. So, yeah, my prediction... I'm going to go, I, don't, I, I, I can't see Southampton getting anything. So I'm going to go Southampton 0, Forest 2, 2-0 two Forest. <laughs> okay then, and the next game is Leeds versus West Ham. Now obviously Leeds um, with a 0-0 draw at Newcastle. And to be fair, I think Leeds were very lucky to get a draw. In the first half they were alright, but the second half Leeds United were absolutely appalling. They were appalling. West Ham, again, they were very, very poor against Brentford. West Ham were very, very poor against Brentford. They lost 2-0. Um, and, yeah, just very poor. And, the, um, the, you know, it's a very toxic atmosphere around the London Stadium uh, at the moment. Um, but uh, prediction, I think, I think West Ham have a chance to get something. So do Leeds. But prediction, I'm, I'm actually going to go Leeds nil. West Ham nil. I'm gonna go with a nil nil. Okay, then, and the next game is um, As it is uh, it's a local Midlands derby. It's Aston Villa versus Wolves at Villa Park. Now Villa, very good performance yesterday. The first half against Tottenham was a bit boring. Both teams were a bit shit. Um, but the second half, Villa played very well. Tottenham, we were absolutely very poor. We were absolutely awful. Woeful. Well, it was abysmal to watch Spurs in that second half. But Villa, you know. By the way, the first goal was a 
Good finish from Fairway Brenton. And the second goal was a finish by Douglas Louise. Wolves over the loss at Man United. Um, but Wolves played well in that game. This game could go either way. This could be a Villa win. This could be a Wolves win. This game could be a draw. For me, I'm going to go with a draw. I think, I, think, I think this screams a lot of goals. So I'm going to go Villa 2, Wolves 2. 2-2. Two, two. Okay, then. And the final game on Wednesday is Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. Now, to be honest... Honestly, where where do I start with Tottenham at the moment? I'm t we are just absolutely all over the place, you know. The ball, and to be honest, it's not the players' fault. It's not Conte's fault. It's the board. It's Daniel Levy. It's Joe Lewis. It's Enoch. It is not. Honestly, they are not giving Conte time. They are not giving Antonio Conte time. Honestly. Honestly, look what look look what we did with Jose and Nuno. We didn't give them time, and we sacked them. Obviously, obviously, honestly, from the last manager we fully backed was Pochettino. Look what Pochettino did. Pochettino came in in 2014. In 2014, we were a mess under Tim Sherwood. But look what he did. He bought in Son. He bought in um, Lloris. He bought in. Oh, I'm from the original already there, but he bought in, you know, all Devira over Tonga. He changed the club. We nearly won the Premier League. We nearly won the Champions League. Under Jose, we nearly won the Carabao Cup. And on, under Poch, under Poch, we nearly won the FA Cup. So I think if if Daniel Levy, to be fair, Levy at the moment cares more about putting up a boxing event. More, more, he's more bothered about. Um, He's more bothered about putting up a music event. He's more bothered about the NFL. He doesn't care what's going on because the cry because the current situation at Spurs at the moment is not good. It is not good. You need contact, not contact. Daniel Levy, Joe Lewis, Enoch, stop going on about bloody music concerts and focus on what's going on at Tottenham because what's going on at Tottenham is not good. Honestly, Conte said after the game yesterday, we need a few more players and we need a squad that can get used to each other. A squad that can get used to each other for a few years. And that's what I want. But Levy says, no, Levy doesn't want to spend money. We, why do you want to spend money? You built a £1 billion stadium. You built, you know, you care more about boxing events. Obviously, you put up Joshua versus Usyk. You put up that Lady Gaga concert. You put up the NFL. Give, give, you know what? Honestly, Daniel Levy needs to stop putting up these stupid events in the stadium and care more about what's going on because we are falling apart. We need if we want to if we want to finish in the top four. Look at the, look. We can't beat Brentford. We can't beat Villa. We have to scrape a win against Bournemouth. It's honestly not good enough to be honest. It isn't. And I'm telling you now. I, I'm telling you now. I'm saying it right now. Crystal Palace three, Tottenham nil. We're gonna lose. Because we're on absolute mess at the moment. And also, Selhurst Park is a very, very, very tough place to go. It really is. It is a very tough place to go. And, you know, Palace, they're doing really well at the moment. They can do well against the big teams. Selhurst Park has, creates a good atmosphere. And I'm telling you now, without Kulisewski, even if, if, if without Kulisewski and Betancourt, we're done. Even if one of them's playing, we're still done. Palace are going to win 3-0, run over in this video. But, yeah, anyway... The final game, it's time to calm down a bit now. But yeah, anyway, it's Chelsea versus Man City. Now, Chelsea, I watched Rory Jennings' reaction on TikTok. And to be fair, Chelsea, Chelsea, you know, Chelsea, they're in the same situation as us. They're not doing well at all. They're not good. They're not getting results. They're not getting results at the moment. So it's just not good enough for Chelsea. But City, but City, Cody watched him and he was very, very angry and frustrated at full time after City's draw with Everton. If City won to win the league, if City won to catch up to Arsenal, like I said about Tottenham, they've got to be beating these teams like Everton, um, Palace and etc. But Chelsea, they are at, Chelsea are a bit of a mess at the moment, you know, it's not going well. I don't know where the goals are really coming from at Chelsea. You know, they don't really have a striker. Well, I know they have a Bamiang, but a Bamiang's not really starting. It's not getting the goals, is he? It's normally coming off off the bench. But Chelsea, I think they are going to get in Cuckoo, which is a decent signing. But City, you know, I think they'll bounce back after that draw against um against uh, Everton, and I and I think City are going to win. Chelsea won, um, Chelsea won, Man City three, three one to Man City. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.